Greetings everyone and welcome back to Tierno, the Lasses of Europe, from which you know about this mod by now. Um, but we got to talk about non-German regions of Austin integrated. The question of how far the current efforts to integrate Austin should go has been a matter of great contention within the colonial authorities today. The Big Daddy stepped in, declaring that with the majority Baltic and Austrian german lands integrated, the Reich's grip on these formerly troublesome lands is secure enough that there is no further need to worry about the possibility of further resistance from the Balts, Slavs, and Estonians who remain in the colony. Accordingly, the aggressive pursuit of Germanization can slow down to a more measured pace. The big leader's reasoning is simple. With their will to fight repeatedly broken and a strong German presence established, the natives pose no threat at this point and their assimilation or displacement is so certain that the Reich can finally afford ease up. Redirecting resources. To more pressing matters, the integration of the remaining parts of Austin, they, be they majority German or native, is to commence immediately and without hesitation. Our race will win out in these areas soon enough. The march of, the, of our race cannot be stopped. The last parts of Austin will be integrated into the Reich uh, forming of New Reichsgauer. 15% non core manpower bonus in all states in Austin with non German cultures. Inflation decreases by 0.5%, increases GDP by 20 billion, and we get 27 cores. Nikes. Oh. Yes. Oh, I love it. But right now, we are doing the German bulldozer, in which we're going to go to war straight with Muscovy because we are running out of time, my friends. We're going to integrate Volinia. The Ukrainian province of Volhynia has been heavily Germanized and it would be beneficial to integrate into Germany proper for a larger industrial and power base. Ooh, that would be great. Even though I didn't loot, I guess, the Ukraine earlier, but, you know, whatever. Uh, the Donetsk problem. Although Germany proper has been secured, one of the parts of the Reich still lays out of our hands. The backstab of Donetsk and his band of pirates based out of the Krim, and in particular the port of Theoderekshafen. Uh, um, we're in an awkward position. The militaries, led by Shorn, are beating the drums of war to embark the idea of negotiation, yet Dernitz is holding the majority of our fleet hostage. We need to quickly draft the plans for a lightning fast invasion of the peninsula and reclaim our ships. Or the rest of the Uh, Teor. Uh, I can't even say this right. Teor Derexhofen. Uh, it's begun. We're now in a race against town to crush the traders and secure the port facilities in the Krim. There's nowhere for Dernitz and his crew to hide. They are surrounded by it and trapped, and they know it. We must reach Theo Rexhofen and our ships before the swine have a chance to sabotage our ships or worse. There's no time for delay. We must act now. Uh, Volcano Islands, huh? Cool. Volinia? Ah, this region here, huh? Hopefully get the cores in this one. If not, I might use Gon's commands, maybe. Hopefully this will actually work. But we got 200 days left. Caucasine? Oh god. Um, what else have we got? Read RWI, nothing there, too much. We got one more production units. Nice. I'm actually gonna throw in one more cities for now, and then, then we'll go throw in more millies. Cause the economy's looking slightly better. Ooh. We just have to go straight to war for all this stuff. War, 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 war. Um, do we need so who do we need? Scan oh, all of Scandinavia. Jesus. That's not going to be very much time. And don't question your orders. Reports have started trickling in from the Ost front. Some of them findings are disturbing, to say the least. Our men have been hesitant when fighting with the German militias that are scattered throughout the Muscovy, going as far as to hesitate while under fire. To make matters worse, some units have gone as far as disobeying orders and not engaging enemies. There are even a select few reports stating that the gross negligence has led to the escape of redacted prisoners. This is not the fighting spirit we wish to instill in our soldiers. Our armies fighting for the glory of Germany and we're fighting for the well-being of our nation, of course. We know that these officers and soldiers are faced with a hard reality on the fronts, which is why we'll make this abundantly clear for them. Follow your given orders, no expectations. Or, no, no expectations. No expectations. Shoot on sight. Despite our best efforts, our men are still hesitating when they face turncoat German formations. This hesitation is a weakness that should not be seen in our soldiers. Therefore, the men will be issued new propaganda or and orders. Germans living on these hellish plains in service to the assorted warlords are failures and traitors all, no exceptions. They've chosen to side with their enemy, henceforth they're not German, they're traitors. Hesitation will no longer be tolerated. We'll issue a new shoot on sight order for the soldiers. If the men do continue to hesitate, then they'll be dealt with internally. Oh. I oh, can push up north, we need to call them all in. There you go. Because we gotta move fast through all these lands. Coup in Thailand. Very nice. Go in. If you can. Ah, happy June, everybody. And the race against time. To the north we go, to Moscow we go. Where's the capital? Ah, Saint Petersburg. 
I like this one too, but not one step back. Well, we'll get. Th well, I guess so. Uh, well, you know, we're gonna wait to do this one. Um, fragile, handle with care. Oil, that most wonderful of materials, remains with vast quantities of a substance, and strange enough, it's a highly flammable one. Incendiary weapons may not be the most practical of the Wunderwaffe, but setting their oil fields alight will do just their job. Launch a bomber, set the targets, and light the world of a flame. A tactical location. Special forces attack and defense. Air superiority by 20%, that's a lot. So he's Allen. A dangerous foe, mechanized artillery at 25%. New perspective. Need more soldiers experiencing these harsh northern climates. Russian mercenaries. Specialized. Oh, I like this one a lot. I think I want to go with the dangerous foe. The Finns, while backwards agriculture and behind technologically, cannot be underestimated. They have proven their fighting prowess against the Soviets, who by all metrics should have smashed the Finns and who are instead blood dry against them. To take the Finnish fighting spirit lightly is a fool's error and will not be one we make. While we will not teach our soldiers to fear the Finn, we will teach them to treat them as a near equal to them, unlike the others we have fought. By doing this, we will hopefully train the soldiers to treat their duties with seriousness and focus. Only the focus, attitude, and conduct worthy of a true soldier of the Reich will be able to roll over the Finns as the Russians should have back in the day. An unexpected opportunity. Officer Krakauer put down the phone, his mind racing for what he just been told. An independence referendum in Jamaica. The powerhouse of the Western Indies Federation uh, at the risk of leaving. The role was a buzz about the possibilities and implications, and it, so now it was the Reich. German intelligence wanted an immediate assessment. Uh, as he began going through to find old and recent documents on Jamaica and the wider West Indies Federation, he considered the facts. Jamaica didn't do as much as sneeze without American permission, and Manly was a reliable American stooge. Uh, America had expressed support for the referendum, which meant that they either felt confident enough to give the people a symbolic vote, or they were under pressure to do this. With the second files, um, Krakow sat down and started reading. Alexander Bustamante was the most prominent opposition to Manly, an outspoken anti-colonialist and nationalist. A useful distraction, though directly assisting someone of such a pure blow was out of the question. An England minority on the island, still loyal to the king, would be a perfectly serviceable proxy instead. Um, further research. And a delivered newspaper revealed the causes for the unrest, a rewritten Federation constitution, one which purportedly was unfavorable to Jamaica. He smiled as he read that, perfect, that could be the focus here. No one liked to be exploited, and the people saw through the American puppets. It was admittedly a long shot, and Krakauer was under no illusions that this would be an easy task, yet if they succeeded. Not only would they embarrass the Americans in the backyard, it would also mean the beginning of the end for the West Indies Federation. He quickly wrote down a list of agents to use, and contacts in the country. It was time to get to work. An enemy, my enemy, is my friend, depending on the situation. Where does invite Caucasia? Oh. In the Civil War, the industrialists of the Caucasia were smart enough to know which was a winning choice and supported us through with the oil we needed. Now we have reestablished a position in Europe, we can pay back the accounts by integrating them into the Reich. Guarantee them some autonomous control over the oil field profits as well as their security. Hey, uh, Plyager, it's so good to see you again after all this time. I cannot express my gratitude for your support during the recent Burger Krieg on pleasantness. The oil you provided us was most useful, yes, very useful in the cause of securing Germany, of course. Come on, we gotta go in faster than this. You gotta go straight for Moscow. Oh. I'll take you two. Straight straight for Moscow. Goring put his hand out to the industrialist he himself had propelled to the path of upper management in 1937. What felt like a lifetime ago now. Plaga shook the outstretched hand, but it was a low level of detached coolness that put the fear on edge. Thank you for the generous words, my fear. You have read the terms of the arrangement I sent to you on our reinvolvement of the Reich, I trust. Goring was taken aback somewhat. He expected a few more pleasantries to be exchanged before they got down to business. I, I looked over it, yes. Skimmed through a good deal of it. I had my age review the rest of it in greater detail. Apply, go press forward. So then you do understand what I will require. That's good. And I'd like to get back to work as soon as I can. You have as much oil as we can produce, and as long as I get the breathing space I need to work. Goring had been on the back foot. Not the kind of situation he wanted to be in as a Fuhrer. He forced his good humor to come back and try to regain some control of the conversation. Of course, of course, yeah, Plaga. You have total control of operations at your discretion, I promise. Please, why don't we discuss the finer details over dinner at Karen Hall? I promise the food is quite excellent. My deepest apologies, but I must decline, my Fuhrer. The work around here never ceases, and if we were to begin producing enough for your army once again, we need to expand then even further. Please, sir, I would ask that you leave me now. Oh, I see, Herr Plaga. I will leave it if it disrupts your efforts. Goring had the horrible feeling that for all that he had, he was powerless here. What choice did he have, though? Plaga could control the oil, and if he didn't cooperate, he had risk destroying the machinery that made it possible. Cooperating was the simplest and most efficient way to get what he needed to fuel his conquests, but that didn't mean he had to like it. Transfer the entire navy to us. A whole one ship. 
Nice. And Vader Mania. We can well eventually. Ninety-three thousand losses. Shoot on sight. That's good. Because I'm gonna fin deal with the fins next. They are a dangerous foe. Oh, well, we're gonna deal with Romania and all them down there first too. Let them deal with each other, and we'll do whatever we can. Honestly, that's growth. That's ten. We did that. We have a yearly deficit. That would help out. Well, it helped out a little bit. Even if he did shoot up. I want at least some sort of growth. Carillion War, that's fine. We don't really care. Oh, and yeah, well, this one too. Alright, so in aiming to pass a stronger constitution, the Americans have overplayed their hand in the West and East Federation, and now it may cost them dearly. A successful independence referendum from Drake will make up. It's an opportunity to embarrass the U.S. in their own backyard. Currently, it's measured, and foreign interference is minimal. But not the season of independence. The RSHA will produce and serve particularly. Distributed propaganda across Jamaica. Exposing the weakness of the Americans and reinforcing that independence is the only logical path forward for the island. Make the Commonwealth connection. Jamaica is home to a small but powerful group of white Anglos, many of whom still pledge loyalty to, to the king. Reach out to our contacts in England so that a connection can be made to these elites. Mobilize the white minority. With a few new constitutions, the West Indies Federation threatens to take the hard-earned wealth of its Anglo elites and distribute it as handouts to the poor surrounding islands. We'll play up these fears, pushing these elites to use their wealth and power to advocate for independence. Encourage capital flight. Even if Jamaica is to become independent, who is to say that the Americans won't meddle in its affairs again? Germany is always in the need of entrepreneurial minds, while welcome any white Jamaican immigrants with open arms as an economic and political victory. Cover our tracks. The Americans' commitment to democracy means their intervention in the referendum is limited, unless we provide them justification to step in. Covering our tracks may be a prudent choice, if only to make the Americans' defeat and the referendum even more embarrassing. Nice. I don't know, I almost see if we're going to save the economy. I don't want to choose the uh, MEFO bills one, just because. Well, let's keep working on naval stuff then, since we're here anyways. Being postponed. Push back with the possible foreign interference. And foreign interference is measured, huh? Well, it is what it is, you know. Oh. Nice. Ah, happy July, everybody. Happy, happy July. As the economy is still slightly shrinking, which is not good, but it is what it is. Probably getting better, though. Dangerous foe, indeed. <coughs> and we will go to war them. I like this one. We need to do this one, but uh, artillery attack will increase. Specialized artillery. The terrain that is so common in Finland poses a unique problem for our artillery. While the standard training grounds for big guns are on the hard plains of central Germany, the snowy forests and thousands of lakes in Finland cannot be further from those training conditions. However, big guns are not prepared for such harsh terrain. They'll be quickly rendered useless in the mud and trees that are so pre prevalent on the Finnish mainland. To combat, they must train our artillerymen on how to deal with such rough conditions as found in Finland. Specialized equipment, winter clothing, and other necessities will be prioritized for our artillery crews. And the guns themselves will be outfitted and made resistant to snow, sleet, and rain. With these improvements, we'll be able to destroy Finnish positions even in those de deepest woods and most in inhospitable wastes. But we'll do this one first. You need Centennial, huh? Painting, huh? All right, measured, measured. Cool. 
supply is pretty bad around here, but you know what? That's pretty much to be expected. I know this group would take a while to get taken care of, and these guys are killing each other. But many is next, definitely. Put them over there. And I'll fragile with care. Specialized artillery. Offer them a choice. Um, let's do a traitor's fate. Romania is a traitor nation. It betrayed us, betrayed national socialism, and betrayed its own people. Regardless of excuse or uh, the difficulty ensuring its defeat, it must be destroyed. Its political classes shall meet the fates of all who betray the Reich. Its soldiery shall serve as laborers in camps. Its land shall be opened up to settlement by the word of the people. Victorious people, German people. When our foes look upon Romania, they shall know what fate awaits them should they defy us, and the message to our commanders, Romania shall fall. Come on, get there. What are you doing? Yaroslavl? My god, is it hard just trying to truck all the way through here. Go there. Take them, beeps. Shout a Bali. Plot and foot. And. Come on. Hello? Ah! Did we get them? I hope so. It's probably that we did get them. Look at that. Rice comes right, Welcome back. Venom Mehmet. It's good. Oh, God. And England? Oh god, I don't know if we can do this within 127 days. We might have to pull some funky stuff here to actually do this. Is it Muscovine? Well, hmm. How strong is Sweden? They're actually relatively strong. These guys don't have a lot of uh, soldiers here, so that's good. Um, I'm going to pull you two off here. You do this. Honestly, if it doesn't go well, well then um, we'll go to some slightly different. I might replay a little bit of stuff uh, off screen. And uh, deal with it like that. Yeah. Pretty much. Oh, 97% chance. Okay. Cool, and when is this? In 18 days? Nice. Alright, so if that's the case, they have the port stacked. Need another one there. I think that should cover its tracks. Two, three. To Malmo. You five. There you go. We're gonna have to be ultra fast on all these. Hey, not one step back. That's good. That's good. If you read this one, please go ahead. And offer them a choice. I'm gonna wait for that war to be over first. A traitor's fate. Can't do this one then. Churches Alwyn's use their distraction in the Civil War to fall back into degeneracy and free itself. We give them a reminder that we are the masters of Europe. Like in the 40s, we will land on the shores of Britannia. Let us fall once and now we'll do so again, and then we'll ensure more capable hands are in power. Might as well. Uh, how many more can we have of these? Falsham Yega. Infantry divisions are nice, is what we're using. Uh, motorized. Panzers. Auslandish divisions. Can't do that. For now, tank divisions. Uh, they're not thick enough, honestly. They'd be way thicker. Ooh. That's fine. Ooh. 
A little bit of lag and no fuel, but whatever. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to probably replay this off screen a little bit. Oh boy. Oh, they have reinforced. Very nice. Cool. Measure 91% chance. We're still doing well over here, so that's good. So for that. Um, Switzerland wouldn't be bad. It's just England's going to be very difficult. Lessons from Muscovine. So it's just from Switzerland. Fortress Buster. Lesson from Finland. The Brothers War. Well. Encryption. This one. If anything can be taken away from Operation Henry, it's now how to maintain proper supply lines. It's not bad. It gets a free infrastructure. Lesson from Finland. Well, not really. Prepare the Marines. Without the full plan we made for Operation Hansa, landing is perhaps the most important part. Twenty years ago, we had met some obstacles when landing in Norway and England, but eventually we still managed to break through their defenses and occupy their nations. And most importantly, we've learned a lot from those two landing operations. Now, our responsibility once again falls on the shoulders of our fearless Marines, and they need to be fully prepared when their operations start so they can get a foothold on the Swedish land for us as quickly as possible. Keep our direction unclear. Our landing operation of the target location can be predicted by the opponents and has already failed before the beginning. Therefore, the confidentiality of our war plan will be put as the highest priority. Our intelligence. Our officials must work as hard as they can to sort of all Swedish and uh, offense spies in our nation. And most importantly, in the next few days, our soldiers and officials will receive several false directions about this specific location they're going to land. No one can get any information about our landing direction, as long as our troops have no clue about their target themselves. The bitter end of the Reichstag. Today, the inevitable has happened. Despite his boisterous proclamations, everyone knew that Hans Hutick would never have been able to keep almost half of Africa under his boot. Only with a handful of fanatical loyalists and a dilapidated economy. And it was only a matter of time before his castle in the air came crashing down. For months, native revolts were increasing in frequency and intensity, uncaring for the rapid retaliations, inflicting devastating losses on the overstretched SS patrols. City after city blacked out. Road after road was taken, and with every passing day, the grip tightened on the besieged administration and a bullish stop. But still, the madman would claim that everything would be returned under control with the appropriate amount of mass executions, and now we know for certain that the sun, black or not, has definitely set over the Gross Afrikanische Reichstag. Aerial Reconnaissance reports that Bullerstadt is aflame, and no sight can be found of Hans Utig or his closest advisors, save for Otto Polschner, who apparently managed to seize Leopoldville and the surrounding area with those SS who managed to survive the onslaught. Claiming to represent the legitimate continuation of Utig's state, he employs the same methods used by his predecessor, though now how could a splinter faction from a rogue colony claim anything resembling legitimacy remains a mystery. For us, this means the end of any dream of restoring German influence over Africa. With their failure to probably secure a foothold, and Polschner's often claim to follow the first of Rees, uh, there will be no way of ever setting foot on the Dark Continent again without being saluted by a bullet aimed at the head. Darn Hutig, even in death, he still causes me damage. So, and of course we're trying to keep our, our direction unclear, as we just read. Um, so, guys, we kind of have to. Now, the divisions aren't super tanky, or great, but traitor's fate. There we go. That's what they deserve, really. Keep our direction clear, of course, but still. Loot, 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 invade. Oh. Race to Theodore Yeah. They have no divisions there, that's fine, whatever. You can suppose this again, whatever. Can have England. Oh, we're removed, okay. Oh. Yeah, it's all the same stuff. Oh, well, goodbye. Ah, that's very good too, though. Quick and quickly move in. Mountains suck fighting, especially against mountaineers. Oof. Terrible, I know. Ah, oh, crap. So these guys we support. Are you? Herberto Schwartau. Huh. Back to basics. Corner stigma. The rigidity of Sparta. All right, well, that's interesting. I'm honestly probably going to do some funky stuff here to make sure that we can actually do all this in time. Because um, we have to go to war with these guys at all the same time. and It's going to be pretty difficult. Um, Danish missile bases. I do want this one, but 
In the 40s campaign against Norway, our bombers made short work of any defense that the Norwegians put up. However, our own success with the strategy led to us dotting the mountains and fjords with flat cannons, and now the Norwegians are bound to use their own weapons against us. To combat this, we should use an invention that the strategists of 1940 could only dream of, missiles. By building up bases in Denmark, we'll be able to fire missiles of all kinds into the mountains of Norway, obliterating any and all bunkers and forts in a hail of rockets and bombs without a single German man being forced to lay his life on the line. In addition to this immediate strategic benefit of these bases, there will also be a fine addition to our defenses against any American incursion into Europe, covering the entrance into the Baltic and much of the North Sea. Indeed, some have even gone to asking why these positions have not been built before now. Well, the answer to this mainly lies in the issue of ac economic downturn of the 50s. This matter, uh, little. It matters little to the current situation. For now, we can rest easy knowing that soon all of Norway will be under the reach of our missiles. The Brothers' War. After all the preparations we made before, now the time for the invasion has finally come. Our brave soldiers, panthers, fighters, bombers, and ships will start their attacks once the order is received. So may I ask, why should we do this to a Nordic nation generally considered to, our, uh, to be our Aryan brothers? Yes, we must admit that this war will be a war between brothers, but when the little brothers are deceived and misguided by their common enemies, it is the big brother's responsibility to correct the little brother's mind, even if it requires some blood to be shed. If not us, who? If not now, when? Good questions to always ask. We got a lot of navy. Fuel capacity, fuel gains at only a thousand. Um, not good. Oof. Auto balance, yeah. Consumed. We need more fuel. Stockpile of zero. Not good. We have everything else pretty much that we need of, but you know, whatever. For something like Romania, that should help us out quite a bit too. Pending economic collapse. The paradox of the Rex financial system is this. We rely on the spoils uh, of war to keep ourselves afloat with the new ever-growing expenditures, and yet we should find ourselves bogged down in our conflicts that cannot be my collapse. Oh, we have like, time to do it for every war. Okay, that's fine. Oh, happy September, everybody. Us, please. Yeah, I'm gonna do some fucking stuff because we can't even invade them. So this is a little bugged, um, so unfortunate. Uh, so with that in mind, planning in return, the British Isles, while geographically separated from the rest of Europe, has remained a thorn in their side for decades. They have harassed us, assaulted us, and killed many innocent men and women of Germany. Now they once again seek to undermine the fierce authority and act in defiance of the Third Reich. How dare they? It seems that they have forgotten what German bombers bombed their cities and German boots stormed their beaches. It's your duty to remind the English foe that the subservient's position, as their subject, will take any measures or means necessary to do so. Plans have been drawn out to partake in the next iteration of this Operation Sea Line, the successful naval invasion of Great Britain many years ago. Many in German high command have suggested that a direct and immediate invasion is the most effective means of defeating our enemy, however. Some suggested a more subtle approach, utilizing subversive elements, and German sympathizers and Britain could be more easily win us this war. Well, both methods could technically be implemented. Time is of the essence, and the fear of patience grows thinner every minute we wait. I hate how we didn't have enough time. It's 400 days seems like a lot, but it's not. It really is not. Do they attack us at all? No? Okay. Oh! There we go, nice. Conquest of Romania. Bucharest surrenders. Our operations secure the Romanian oil fields and bring down the treacherous government of Bucharest has concluded successfully. In radio broadcast, the government has announced to lay down their weapons. With some mid and low level personnel has fled to other countries to form a self proclaimed government in exile, meaningful resistance has ceased for the moment. General Hep, Rex Commissar for the Balkans, is already on his way to review the state of the Plasti oil fields. As well as industrial plans, further goring is also requesting a thorough review of this museum. For now, though, we bask in the glory of victory. The Donau is Deutsch. As it should be. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to let them in for a little bit. Like this. Oh, it stands with them. Whatever. We don't care. Oh god, that's huge. 
massive. Do that. Damage missile bases. Yes. In all honesty, you might be able to do this by yourselves. Invade Bulgaria. Which we will need to do eventually as well. Checking donuts. The next one, invasion two, but play phase two plan uh, invasion. Like dragons, the Swiss bankers sat on the mountains, hoarding their wealth and attacking any who dared to approach their territory for years. They swindled the people of Germany, tricking them into adding to their pile of gold before twisting them for all the money they have. According to the Führer, uh, the pigs have been meddling with the German economy, directly causing the crash of the fifties. But as in all stories about dragons, one day a knight in a shining arm will come to the dragon's lair. Though the dragon may breathe fire and roar, inevitably the good knight slays the beast and takes the wealth. We are the knight and will defeat the dragon and take the wealth with steel, lead, and fire of our own. It's time to end the dragon once for all to war. Um, honestly, with this old modifier here, I might just, like, turn it off. I might disable Mad Mechanics, too. Just because I've done it before, and this seems like it's taking a little longer than it normally does. Um, so... Just have the Ionized back down here. Looking pretty good over here. It's pretty thick over here. I might just do that. We'll see. Oh god, did we lose that many convoys? Are we supposed to be convoy raiding? Jesus Christ, come on guys, do better than this. Yeah, honestly, I want to do this right. I want to have enough time to do everything, so... Uh, oh god, that's terrible. I might just disable the war timer. Hmm... We don't have enough time. It takes forever to get to England. These guys would take forever too. I don't know. I think I might just disable it. Or maybe not. Or is it the. Uh, Nether's mechanic? No? Okay then. Mad mechanics. Because I want to take my time and actually do like do everything that we possibly can. It's much more fun to do everything we possibly can than anything else. It's my opinion. I could be wrong, and I apologize if that's not what you guys wanted, but I'd still rather just you know invade as best we can and and do a good job overall. Oh, we just go straight to Norway this way. Yeah. Okay, don't do that one. Those guys are pretty much already over there. I want them to come into our land so we can beat them more easily. Or maybe not. We can wait. Let's cancel that first, maybe. Because I do want this one. Centralized military hospitals. I want to do actually all these focuses. Due to the mountainous terrain of the Swiss Alps, much of our current hospital infrastructure is unsuitable to be deployed on the front lines. In order to better suit our forces, we must develop and deploy more efficient hospitals to deal with the condensed French Swiss front. Air recognition. At such high altitudes, the easiest way to perform effective reconnaissance is by air. Both we and the Swiss know this, and as such that they have taken efforts to camouflage their emplacements to trick the untrained eye. How very typical of the cowards. We're treating our bombardiers and other scouts who recognize the Swiss emplacements and guns, and show them how to spot even the most hidden position will never be surprised by a bunker or machine gun again. Uh, mountain combat training. Most of Switzerland is mountains. Most of Switzerland's defenses are in said mountains. Obviously, our men must be trained in the ways of the high altitude combat, mountain scaling, and other ways that use the Alps to their advantage. The Swiss will not expect our men to be able to fight them on equal terms in the mountains, and we can use that to our advantage. It'll be a tough fight to get through the Swiss, but with training and skill, victory is inevitable, and dust off the bookshelves. During the destruction of the Allies many years ago, multiple plans to destroy the Swiss were drawn up, each with their own ideas, plans, and movements. Of course, we were never able to complete these plans as more urgent matters came up and the plans were shelved in long ignored offices. So I'm going to open these plans, pick and choose the best ideas, and combine them into one glorious file for Tannenbaum. So hope this doesn't destroy us. Care about your recognition's good. I 
I want us to be able to take our time for all this stuff. Oh god. Oh god, we found their navy, huh? Just don't lose any ships. Our ships are precious. Nice. This one, I would just go straight to war with them next, so that's fine. Memorandum on the Boer Republic. From Kai Uwe von Hassel. Prote Rex Protector of Co Congo. Oh god. Following the resignation of Alt uh, Albert Herzog as a result of internal discontent within the Helstiga Nacional Party, due to his closeness with the deceased Rex Commissar Hultig, the paramilitary party has designed Yap Marais as a successor. The development is to put it bluntly a disaster. Marais is widely recognized as the leader of the neutralist faction within the Boer regime imposed to us and utterly against joining the Reinhardt's Pact. While we can do, safely expect that Marais won't allow with, ally with our enemies, K okay, might just well be lost to us. If we only had aided them more. Come on, guys, do better. No rest. We cannot let the Swiss regroup once we make our breakthrough, or we will simply be bogged down in another line of bunkers and guns. We must constantly attack, constantly bomb, constantly raise hell behind the lines if we wish for this war to come to a swift conclusion. These strategies should keep them confused and on the run enough for us to stop any residual contact. Chop off the head. As long as the Swiss army has leaders and generals, our plan to completely confuse them will never bear fruit, full fruit. Now look at this. Um, therefore, we must use wood until we can get kill as many leaders of the armed forces as we can. It's an, a glimmer of locations revealed. At least 10 bombers will be obliterate the position. We will win. Exploit the Schwerpunkt. The Swiss, in preparation for attack, have built one of the most comprehensive defensive lines on our border. T uh, tank traps, trenches, and bunkers cover the landscape. These defenses, no doubt funded by the German gold they have stolen from us, are some of the best in the world, of course. Attacking them head on in a front wide offensive might only end to slaughter. Instead, we'll reuse the strategy used in it to annihilate the Poles and French in the Second World War. The Schwerpunkt will especially be used as a mass charge of tanks at a vulnerable point in the line may break all it takes to shatter the entire line, the line entirely. Once it will wreak havoc behind the Swiss lines, confusing their defense, and pushing through any remnants with ease. It's simple, really. <coughs> Hope this doesn't kill us in the end, because if it does, I'm going to replay all this. <laughs> oh, yeah. The meat grinder. The Swiss defenses are heavier than previously thought, much heavier. Even the most dire expectations of bunkers, trenches, mines, and all the other trappings of war seemed like jokes in comparison to the wall of lead that seemed to lock us out of Switzerland. Fiergoring, after sending his intelligence team to the nearest prison, has issued an order to strip more men to replace our numerous losses. Lord knows we're gonna need it. 67, it's almost 68. Go and grab this, it's fine. Can you do this at all? He's like, let's consider them here. Swiss capital bomb. Every day they're anxiously waiting intel reports regarding the locations of Swiss leadership. The Oberkommando de Luftwaffe finally received a call on the busy phone lines informing them of the locations of multiple high ranking Swiss leadership officials and staff, including the Swiss president himself. Loaded with a combination of bunker buses alongside high explosive incendiary bombers after being on standby for the past two weeks, Kampfgesch uh, von der Eins was immediately dispatched to hit their primary and secondary targets within the capital city of Bern. The total annihilation of the Swiss leadership and the burning out of his nest of rats, this infestation was now in motion. Tonight, their den burst in a cleansing inferno. Around half an hour after the dispatch, reports of the destruction flooded in. The Swiss Federal Palace now relies on ruins, with the fires engulfing it along with the vast amounts of the surrounding area, with the flames spreading throughout burnt uncontrollably, destroying valuable infrastructure and damaging Swiss industry in the process. Later reports confirm the safety of the Swiss president along with other high ranking Swiss officials. While the rats may have escaped to a new hole to continue their feudal resistance this time, the prize nest has been expunged, and it will be seen that they too will be inevitably expunged later alongside it. They can only hide for so long. I was gonna suck them right here, look at that. Um, yeah, 
just want to take my time with all this stuff, man. Sabotage in the Alps as an interesting plan has been uh, proposed uh, to the Fuhrer as we push into Switzerland. They'll continue to retreat to new lines of force deeper in the Alps. If we do not prevent this, then we'll face fierce, fierce resistance for every meter of ground we gain, something we cannot afford. The new Swiss Burgundian border allows a small complex of fortifications. We have yet to reach them, but they are strong enough that they will pose a threat once fully manned. Currently, however, they are vulnerable and with most Swiss forces on the front lines. The newly proposed plan would have to sabotage these forts, rendering them useless before the Swiss have a chance to cower inside them. A small debate has emerged on how we should sabotage the force, of course. The Wehrmacht wants to use their special forces in a land operation has been done before, but the Luftwaffe are pushing for the use of their paratrooper divisions in aerial maneuvers. Both will likely be effective, but it's up to us to decide which forces we should utilize. Oh, ground operation is fine. Come on, let's leave. My god, let's go. Get out of there. Set up successful. It seems we picked the right force uh, for the job after all. An elite team of uh, ground forces successfully infiltrated and subsequently destroyed key parts of the Swiss force complex near the Burgundy border, rendering the fortification useless. Our forces were able to exfiltrate, and the administration is very impressed with the performance of the Wehrmacht Special Operations Team. Now we will advance in uh, the Western Swiss Theater, as the Swiss are without concrete walls of Habeheim. Our panzers will roll over their makeshift defenses, hastily constructed in a futile attempt at resistance. Let them cower fear in fear as Germany takes back its rightful territory. Onwards. Contain, uh, contact the hardliners. Despite the traitor Terboven having left Norwegian to the natives and abandoning it to the Republicans and Communists, not all circles of Norwegian society were pleased with the turnout. Credible sources state that there is an underground movement of former administrators and party members waiting for a return. While these men enjoy limited support from the populace and have not been a sizable threat to the current government, surely all they need is a kick in the pants and a nice FAL in their hands. By sending funds and guns to these patriots, we could possibly stage an insurrection with their invasion, causing confusion and chaos. At the end of the day, any help is appreciated, and native soldiers fighting for a cause only makes it that much easier. Uh, helicopters over the Baltic, since our first invasion of Norway back in 1940. Technology has improved greatly in terms of military equipment, of course. One of these many improvements came in the advent of the helicopter, which has revolutionized airborne warfare. Where once airborne troops would have to leak from bulky transport planes in limited numbers, now full squads of men can be quickly and efficiently transported in helicopters. Not only that, but helicopters can also be used as a form of close air support, supporting troops and providing a quick fire on any enemies on the ground. By using this fascinating new technology, we can swarm the resisting Norwegians with a cloud of steel and lead, overwhelming their defenses and seizing ports before they can mount a defense. Of course, helicopters have their drawbacks. Their slow speed makes them susceptible to anti-aircraft attacks, and their air-to-air -air capabilities are limited at best, however. With the numbers we bring, and this will not matter, a swarm will engulf Norway, and from it our men will pour out and obliterate our traitors who dare resist. What is this? Basic cruiser hull. Cool. And there you go. Destroyers, whatnot. Um, 68 still. You have support. I keep doing that stuff. What do we got here? It's not bad. Um, how are we doing here? and all the trees were burned to ashes. The situation in Africa is, to put it lightly, disastrous. The war that occurred between the Reich's colonial entities and South Africa has left infrastructure devastated, communications torn apart, and the population agitated. This was massively compounded by Hans Hutten, who annexed the other two colonies and began per perpetrating a campaign of overt repression. This completely alienated anyone that could even consider collaboration with the government and quickly led to mass famine and mass unrest. Hutten's government has utterly collapsed. The loyalist elements of our administration has gathered in and around the city of Leopoldville. The territory historically encompassing the Congo regions declared independence, though they have been immediately been brewed in a civil war. The rest of Putin's former holdings can be described as no less than anar anarchic. anarchic. We have managed to establish communications with the German remnant in Leopoldville, and the RSHA urges the right to send for funding in order to keep them alive and quickly as the possibility of revolt is rising by the day. And the fires of the slaughter still do the perpetrators remain. Oh, I can't help them out there, huh? Uh, where are they? 
South Africa. Ah. Not the portion. Border betrayal, border frictions, ongoing fiscal crisis, combat in the fiscal crisis. Oh, they sell this focus tree, huh? That's cool. Is this a focus tree that was from that one mod um, that was banned from Steam? Is it? It might be. I think it is. Might not be, though. I'm not sure entirely. Ah, oh, screw it. We're just gonna go in then. We'll do the best we can. Someone at work. This cruel Norwegian rain was whipped and blown by the North Sea's fierce winds, cutting across Han's face as he retreated into his raincoat's collar. The man who greeted me on the docks looked similarly uncomfortable, an understandable feeling. Judging by how soaked he was, the two men shared a quiet code phrase with each other, both gauging to see the other was not at all they claimed to be. Evidently, after safely identifying each other, the men began to speak to one another. Neither worried of any potential eavesdropper, they were the only men out on such an ugly night. So they're directly here on the fear's orders, hmm? What does he want out of us? The Norwegian quietly asked. Hans could not discern whether his shiver came from any fear or if it was just a byproduct of the wild conditions. He has two proposals for you. With the belief that you have the resources to do one of them, Hans replied. Let me hear them. The first is a simpler one. We'll give you some arms, some explosives, a manual or two, and you do with them what you see fit. Perhaps the factory suddenly finds its machi main machinery rooms a, a detonated mess. Perhaps the railroad finds itself explosively cut. Hans judged the reaction of the native's face and was rather disappointed to find none of any real note. The second's a bit more subtle. We give you some designs, some ideas, and a lot of paper. You make the magic happen, maybe convince the people that we Germans aren't so bad, and our lives get a lot easier. Which one do you want? The man pioneered silently, continuing to shiver. Hans suddenly realized that there could be a third reason to shiver. Sheer excitement. The pen is mightier than the sword. Can't go wrong with explosives and guns. Ah, you know what? Let's go with the pen. We're still going to go to war with them, but still. And yeah, we'll go to war with them, too. Um... A new perspective. The military corruption and blow that our regime has inherited was widespread and has proven to be a massive thorn in our side. Our methods of strategy and tactics seem to be permanently stuck in the era of the 50s in the West Russian War. No, it may be even worse than that. Our military planners have seemed to be operating still under the assumption that this is the Second World War. It goes without saying how dangerous this mindset is when trying to conduct modern warfare if we don't take our efforts to curtail this soon, who knows what kind of troubles we could find ourselves in as the scales of the operations increase. For this reason, the Fuhrer has ordered a comprehensive review of our most recent actions and reclaim the Reich's territory. We'll sift through all of our actions, adopting the methods that work and leaving behind what no longer does. We just have to hope that Schorner and his cronies don't hamper our plans too much. This is probably going to be very painful. Let's get our guys on the front first, though. How's the economy looking? Still not great. And we have a deficit, too. Oof. Inflation is pretty high. Honestly, I'm, we could try counter pennies. So, we'll see. Little to endure, huh? Whispers of a return. The dark silk streets lay silent and empty, save for one empty car one cargo truck parked off to the side of the road. With its headlights off and engine silent, one could only assume that its business was of the highly illegal type. One man sat in the driver's seat, cigarette twisting between his index and middle finger. He wasn't allowed to light it, they said. Any light could be a possible trigger for a watchful policeman or a concerned citizen to investigate. The three shadows, moving down the street, made their own effort to stay out of the light, sneaking close to walls and moving only under the edges of a street lamp's glow. Occasionally, they would stop, turn into a wall to pay something onto it. The man on the truck could not read what they were saying, but he knew what it was. Poster after poster, detailing the benefits of restoring the German or commissariat. Finally, the two men returned, their hands empty. As the driver flicked his headlights on and began to drive away, the light flashed off. The multitudes of posters plastered around every building. It couldn't help but laugh at the almost comedic sight of it. This would be a hell of a thing to wake up to for the locals. Perhaps they would see the lie, perhaps they wouldn't. Either way, one thing is for sure. People would know what, that the Germans were coming and that the Hardlanders of Norway were ready with open arms for them. That's a start. I'm glad we eliminated a few of the divisions at the very least. Anyway, I actually got in here too. This wreck is nice. We're here too. We need you to help out as, with as much strength as possible. What's the casualty ratio? 16,000, not bad. It's not bad at all, actually. I'm glad we eliminated some of them beforehand. 
We've done it. The Swiss board is in our hands, and the rest of Switzerland's for sure to follow. Uh, breakthrough. Phase three. We've done it. The tanks are through. We now have the opportunity to crack the Swiss nuts and take the riches with them. It's now a matter of getting as far as we can with what we have, shattering morale, and not letting those gosh darn Swiss get into another defensive line. If we push hard and fast, we'll be able to win this war soon. We must be able to sure and move as fast as possible, seizing as much as we can before the perfidious Swiss get to evacuating the cash or setting up even more defenses. Situation at home gets uglier with each day that passes, with nothing but uh, pine coffin after pine coffin as a news for the people. If we do not win soon, we may have to deal with some serious consequences. <laughs> Men grow closer to the end of the war with each model of land seized. Yet the fatigue of war near the constant attack and the collapse of morale with every, every one of our many setbacks threaten to force us to stop our push and let the enemy regroup. We must find a way to keep the men in order and pushing forth lest we settle back into the stalemate that has plagued us. Push, punch stragglers. As we push deeper and deeper in the Swiss Alps, we occasionally capture prisoners while they retreat to the next bunker. These prisoners, while possibly being a good source of intelligence on Swiss positions, have nearly unanimous refused to talk to us, defending these bunk bankers and businessmen who oppress them. The blended fools are beyond salvation. Instead of using them as intelligence, we use them as morale boosts, public executions, crowd punishments, forced confessions, whatever it takes, we'll do it. These men have sown the wind with bullets and shells, and now they will reap the whirlwind of the Fairmox Fury. Oh god, that's even worse. Um. And we just started this, though. Happy year, 1968. I know we're a little behind the times right now, but it is what it is. But we're doing the best we can right now. The POW question, huh? In case we're never told, you're going to do about this, please go ahead. Next one, look at that. Bolden. East. Well, since we're here anyways, we're going to help uh, defeat uh, Bulgaria, maybe? Ah, technical issues. Okay, so we don't have to do that one. Nice. Siegfried scowled as he dug through the box of parts, many of which were covered in grime, oil, rust. Go to Africa, a superior officer said with a smile. No better way to serve the fear of Father Lamb. You will be treated like a hero and certainly be promoted upon your victory. You should have known better, but the promise of a promotion had been too tempting to pass up. A higher rank meant more money, and no one had truly recovered since the Civil War. He and his family were no exceptions. Even still, the reality of this adventure was far from the picture that had been painted for him. I wouldn't expect that if, uh, <clears throat> if he and other volunteers were being sent to this colony, he would be reasonably well supplied and supported. That was a laughable, a laughable assumption. The colony barely had any actual supplies, materials, or equipment, and what little they did have was either outdated or just flat out broken. The guns they had arrived with had quickly made its issues. Normally, it requests requisition replacement parts or even just a new weapon. Neither was an option here, which was why he was now scrounging this grimy shit for... Ah, there it was. He fished out the piece he'd been looking for. It was rusted, slightly bent, and in any civilized country, he'd throw it away, but here he, he couldn't afford to be picky. He slipped into his pocket and returned to a nearby bench with a few other parts. Sitting down, he began to try to rig up the gun and it is something usable. He grimaced as he held the finished weapon. It was ugly. Might right out break or even blow up in his hands before firing, but it was the best thing he was going to get. All that mattered was that it could fire, and the only thing worse than having a faulty gun in these parts was having no gun at all. Survival of the or Russian mercenaries. Germans hate Russians, and Russians hate Germans. It's a way of life in today's times, and we didn't see no reason to change it. However, Russians don't hate money or guns, and if there's one thing that Germans, we Germans have, it's money and guns. By handsomely paying some of the more cooperative Russians in the East, giving them a gun and pointing them in the direction of Helsinki, we can hopefully use such untomech as cannon fodder soaking up casualties while the hell does the real work. Even better for us is that the Finns have seized what is considered rival Russian territory, which only motivates those we recruit to fight even harder than normally, instead of thousands of Aryan lives being ended prematurely, we can hopefully spend thousands of useless Russian lives instead. Well, the colonial divisions and the Russian mercenaries, one must wonder whether a single, tr a single truly Aryan life will even be lost in this campaign. We need more soldiers to experience these harsh northern climates. I don't like it, but hiring Russian mercs might just be the choice we make. Nice. Yeah, we're gonna make more divisions. But since we're here and we decided to do what we wanted to do, uh, I'm gonna call everybody in this war. There we go.
Yeah, whatever. A fresh new look. With the realization that the Finns will be a tough fight comes a stellar opportunity for fixing many things with their army. Currently, even as great as glorious Wehrmacht is, there are still multiple problems in relation to its structure, bloat of bureaucracy, and poor training. These problems are not specific to the Wehrmacht, much to our chagrin, indeed. These same issues have embedded themselves one way or another into each and every one of our military branches. For Lapland, these problems were entirely unassailable, due to our constant rhetoric about how the Wehrmacht is the best on Earth now, of course. With the cover of training our men for the next conquest, we have the perfect opportunity to remove the worst offenders from our ranks, unfortunately for our plans. It seems the militarists have caught some wind of the scheme and have stepped in to stop it before we got too far. Reportedly, Shornan and Skleek are furious with the Reichstag and the Fuhrer, as many Shornanerites have been caught up in this, however. We managed to make some form of dent into the corruption that permeates our armed forces. Already missing equipment, instances, and cases of lost cash deposits have been dropped, giving us more to work with as a result. Our troops are already doing better in their drills, and many seem more motivated than before. Though we may never have an opportunity like this again, at least we know we've done something. If only Shona would get out of the way. Occupation is tiring work. With our occupation of Hungary, the local populace appears to object. While it's not a daily occurrence, in some regions such as Budapest, riots have been overwhelming garrison forces sent to quell them. A solution suggested by the Fuhrer is donating some of our more outdated equipment, specifically from the Soviet War, to military police and uh, to arm the regiments uh, and, to, and garrison regiments as to ensure the efficient running of the operations in the region, conquest of Sweden. Flying over the royal palace of Stockholm, the Swastika flag now flies uh, standing as a shining symbol of our total victory against Sweden. Though we met more obstacles than our previous expectation in these weeks, Operation Hansa eventually proves to be another great triumph for the Reich, though there's still great activities in the kitchen and forests. Overall, we can proudly announce that the whole Swedish nation has finally joined their Germanic brothers after millennia of separation. Yeah, but even though the military operations have succeeded at present, our work is still, of course, far from over. To utilize local manpower, industries, and resources, we need to establish effective administration over our newly conquered land on Scandinavia. Just like other nations, those Swedes will be governed by a Reich's commissary established by the Reich with a rear general, Heinz Gerog Lem, the leader. A well-known man who is devoted to the National Socialist cause, he will surely govern this land well and integrate local Swedes into the new Germanic fatherland. And for now, let's rejoice in the glory of the Reich and the unity we Aryan nations. Of we uni of we Aryan nations. May the Swiss timbers and irons be made into swords, and the Swedish people will be made into berserkers against the Reich's enemies. See Kyle. Welcome to your family, little Swedish brother. Oh, we need. I have at least two. I have made all three. Dang, I should have read this more closely, but you know, whatever it is, whatever. Um, oh, they're actually doing very well against these guys. I like it so far. England, yeah, we could. There's no way. England's bugged right now, so. Which is unfortunate. So that's my excuse for all this. England is bugged. Bid. Not good. Not good. A defeat from the Jaws of Victory. Oh. A platoon of German Africans and soldiers were sitting down to celebrate a hard-won victory at the local village bar, one of the native Congolese waitresses. A particularly charming, attractive woman was sharing some small talk with the youngest member of the squad. The young man, after all being a hormonal youngster of university age, was charmed. The older soldiers in the platoon shook their heads at this. What blatant degeneracy. Doesn't the kid know nothing good can come from associating with subhumans? But the younger members of the platoon nudged him along, urging him to continue on. One soldier in particular, called Hansi by his platoon, was being really insistent. Oh, come on, Putsi. Show her a good time and go have some fun. His pushiness ultimately convinced the young man to, pro pro to proposition the waitress. It went all to crap the next day. To Hansi's horror, the one they called Putsi did not come back satisfied and kind of embarrassed. No, Hansi found him bloodied and mutilated in a ditch. The way in which he had been killed by, led by a failed webble to conclude that the waitress was one of those women widowed by Hutu's terror who avenged her lost husbands by seducing and slaughtering German soldiers. The village had seemed more or less welcoming to the soldiers, now seemed hostile, and the remaining soldiers felt others staring at them. Hans was trembling with anger and guilt, his hands shaking as he tightly gripped his gun. He looked around and saw threats, degenerates, murderers. He needed to do something to protect himself, he needed it too. At that moment, Hansi turned on the crowd in a fit of rage, screaming incoherent, enraged gibberish about Putsi and the degenerates and murderers. His hand clenched around the trigger, ready to fire at the moment's notice. Truly war as hell. Yeah, pretty much. I might still go back and replace some of this too. But face for a cleanup. Finally, it's over. The dragon lies dead at her feet, and its horde is open for the taking. Uh, though the blood of Germany's sons runs through the passes and rivers, it's more than made up for than both gold and prestige. Already the economy seen a rise, and the people of Germany celebrate that their foes vanquish. It's now time to clean the remnants of resistance after scrounging up any coin we can, after all. That was the main purpose of the attack, and it would be quite the waste to lose some. Recognizing danger. Danger seems to be around every corner of occupied Switzerland. The soldiers should learn to recognize hidden gun batteries. With Swiss resistance dealt with, it's no longer necessary to teach your soldiers how to counter the resistance. The cowardly, treacherous Swiss are doing what they've always done to proud sons of Germany. 
Though they greet soldiers with smiles and greetings, behind our backs and they pass around rifles and ammo, ready to strike against our glorious rule, some things never change it seems. We must train our soldiers to recognize these masks of friendliness. They'll know to look for the four smiles, the glassy eyes, the nervous ticks, there will be no hiding, there will be no surprises, we will control Switzerland whether they like it or not. The southward military migra migration. Now, there's one thing the Swiss were good at, it was bunkering down. These fortifications rival even the heaviest parts of a border with Burgundy and their effectiveness was proven in the blood of the German men. Simply letting these rot would be a shameful waste of wind, instead of using the gold we have acquired to build more forts, we could simply move whatever salvageable parts of the bunkers that are left to the Italian border and bolster defenses there. Buzzing trucks, cranes, and Swiss labor. We can change those bunkers from useless concrete blurks to the strongest fortifications lying in all of Europe. Integration, integrate Swiss into the Reich. She won't take control of Switzerland off and neutralize guerrillas. Oh, we gotta integrate them. The Swiss, disgusting traitors as they are, are still ethnically Germans, and therefore some of them are Aryan. These men were not inherently treasonous to the Reich, and they have simply been misguided or misled by the leaders who hope to destroy our revolution. Instead of treating them as we would treat the standard Untermensch, we'll give them some special status. Perhaps if they work for the Fuhrer and long and hard enough, we will formally appoint them Aryans. That would be a good thing, would it not? Um, yeah, we need this one. Well, we're still waiting for that one, though. Um, occupation starting work, as well as the gateway to the Balkans. The ultimate reasoning behind Operation Margaret was not the importance of Hungary itself, but rather its position as related to the Balkan nations, and most especially Romania. Uh, the Nubian frontier allows the Reich's free access to the wealth and industry a conquest of the Balkans would produce, though whether this is a path that should be embarked upon immediately is a decision of the Fuhrer. With the easy conquest of southeastern Europe, tantalizingly within reach, things are looking good for the Reich, of course. As we're just demolishing Bulgaria, as anyone really should, truth be told. And are we there yet? Come on. Should be there by now in Sofia. Which actually my parents have been to. So. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Conquest of Bulgaria. The recent fighting in Bulgaria has been miraculously ended. It's Tsar Slamian II officially sent us to surrender the Fuhrer Hermann Goring of the Reich. The tragic irony is that no doubt will he be observed and opined on at length by international observers in the coming weeks is that while Bulgaria could have had the capability to put up a fierce fight, they were fully, were fully mobilized. As decades long reliance on its allied Germany left it completely unprepared when its former master came calling. Still, even with all the military's weaknesses, reports on the ground indicated that the soldiers of the Royal Bulgarian Army fought as well as anyone could have given their equipment and map our shortages that they would end up fatally compromising them. The fall of Bulgaria represents the latest domino to be knocked over by the whirlwind of force nature that has been the German war machine under its bombastic new leader. Governance of Bulgaria's territory has been given over to the Reich's Commissariat Balkan Halbins. Uh, as was the case with the fellow Balkan victims, including the Kingdom of Romania. A poor ally they turned out to be. This is pretty normal. Uh, it's pretty bad overall. It's reducing it by that much. Eh, we'll see. 20%. Multiply it by 5. Honestly, it doesn't change this too much. We're still losing our GDP, which is not good. And debt to GDP ratio is going up as well, which is not ideal. Uh, we could loot Switzerland. Uh, or we could loot the Balkans some more. Okay. Why not? And we can erase these guys too. Uh, we'll probably do that as well. But we're not there yet. But we might save that for the next episode. Apologize that uh, we're not doing it with like we should. But it is what it is. So if you enjoyed this video too, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. Like I've always said. And I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see what else we can do. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.